You probably know what's about to happen. We're in Salt Lake City, Utah. It's June 14th, 1998. NBA Finals, game six between the Bulls and Jazz. Time winding down. Michael Jordan has the ball. What are these people thinking? How are they feeling? What do they remember and expect? This is an iconic moment, but they don't know that yet. They only know what's behind them. So let's rewind. Jazz Bulls in 98 is a finals rematch with an important twist. In 1997, the Bulls posted the best record in the NBA and thus had home court advantage in the finals. But this season, the Jazz have the same record as the Bulls and they hold a tiebreaker because of a 24 point comeback that won them the regular season series with Chicago. So Utah has home court advantage. And this is the era of 2-3-2. Two, two. So games one and two were at home. We're in Utah now. And if there's a game seven, that's gonna be in Utah also. Playing at home means the Jazz got fireworks that might've been a little too loud. And Carl Malone got a pat on the butt from this perverted man bear. Utah was also relatively well rested going into the 98 finals. They had a tough first round against the old ass Rockets, but coasted to easy series wins against young Tim Duncan and the Spurs, then young Kobe Bryant and the Lakers. The Bulls, meanwhile, were still sore from a seven game slog against the Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. Utah took game one at home when Scottie Pippen missed a buzzer beating three, and the series stayed tightly contested from there. Every game has been close, except game three. We won't talk about game three. Of course, if this were a boxing match, they would have stopped it already on cuts. Utah fell down 3-1 in Chicago, but gutted out a game five win to take the series back home. So all that explains why we're here in Utah for game six and why if the Bulls lose tonight, it's gonna to be pretty tough in game seven. The Jazz have a real shot at becoming the first ever team to come back from a 3-1 deficit in the NBA Finals. And I think there are more reasons to believe that Utah could win that game seven. You'll notice that Scottie Pippen is alone. Carl Malone isn't even looking at him. That's because Scottie is toast. His back's been messed up since at least game three. Pippen got tons of treatment to try and get right for this game six. Then he went ahead and did this on the very first play of the game. And now he can barely move his upper body. It looks like Scottie Pippen is laboring as he moves up and down the court. He spent most of the first half in the locker room. Even after returning for the second half following treatment, Pippen can't help much and knows it. If this goes to a game seven, it's hard to imagine Pippen being useful at all. And Bulls coach Phil Jackson doesn't have great alternatives. For now, he'd rather leave an injured Scotty out there than say, Judd Bushler. So yeah, Malone's not worried about his man. He's focused on Jordan and why shouldn't he be? With Pippen hurt and point guard Ron Harper nursing a flu, MJ has done everything. He's attempted more shots in this game than the rest of the Bulls combined. And honestly, it's been a mixed bag. Remember, this is a 35 year old who got basically no rest between series and has been shouldering even more of the scoring burden than usual with Pippen hurting. MJ shot poorly during game five and missed the buzzer beater that could have ended the series in Chicago. And here in game six, in another workday of over 40 minutes, Jordan's had some horrid stretches hitting just 14 of his 34 shots so far. Even Superman apparently gets tired. But he's still MJ. And this guy, Brian Russell, has been pissing him off. Even in a bad shooting performance, Jordan has summoned the energy to ruin Russell a few times. Honestly, Russell might not be the right guy to guard MJ. Jordan cooked Russell to draw game-tying free throws with a minute to go. He cooked Russell to cut a jazz lead to one 30 seconds later. And, well, we'll get to this. I wanna focus on the score at first. This game maybe shouldn't be this close right now. There are two calls that are going to haunt the Jazz if they can't pull this out. Back in the second quarter, Utah's backup point guard, Howard Isley, buried a deep three right before the shot clock expired. Referee Dick Bavetta called a 24 second violation. It looks like he was wrong and Isley got it off in time, but a play like that can't be reviewed in 1998. There's more. Pretty late in the fourth quarter, Harper found himself in a similar situation for the Bulls, tossed up an ugly runner and buried it just before time expired. Or did he? Sure doesn't look like it. If they miss that call, it's a five point swing in missed calls on shot clock situations. So yeah, that's five points worth of questionable calls that went against Utah. Right or wrong, we're looking at a score of Jazz 86, Bulls 85. By the way, are you familiar with all these people we're looking at? We've got five future Hall of Famers on the floor. 
Two of them will go on to wrestle this summer. We've got two sharpshooters who will one day become NBA head coaches. We've got Tony Kukoc, one of the greatest European players ever. We've got Russell, the man assigned to Jordan. And we've got this guy. This is Antoine Carr, AKA the big dog. I'm not just pointing out Carr because he's large and lumpy and wearing his extremely dope tinted rec specs and I love him. He is, in addition to all those wonderful qualities, an important character to understand what happened immediately before this moment. See, Carr hadn't been playing much until the second half of game five. That's when coach Jerry Sloan decided to change up his strategy a bit and let Malone work in the post instead of running pick and roll. Carr's got more range than any of the other jazz centers, so he was swapped in to keep the floor spaced for the mailman, who could either go to work in single coverage or kick out to his shooters if he spotted Chicago sending help. And here in game six, Carr has still been hooping. It's wonderful. The extra spacing has indeed helped Malone dominate from that left block. He's lived there all game, bucket after bucket after bucket for 31 points on 19 shots. Seven assists too, because Malone's found the open man whenever he sees a second defender coming. That's how John Stockton got the three pointer that put Utah up three with 42 seconds left in the game. And after MJ cut that lead to one, Malone was ready to go right back to work. He had the ball in his office and shooters, including Carr, all around him. Identical to Utah's pet play from game five. If left alone, he could score. If he saw guys coming to help, he could kick it out again. But what about the guy he didn't see? That was Jordan. And Jordan knew where Malone would be looking to read the D and where his blind spot was, and he pounced. And now, here we are. It's Bulls ball, down one, with time almost gone. If they blow this, the series goes to game seven here in Utah. Scottie Pippen's back is wrecked. Michael Jordan is 35 years old and pondering retirement, but he's doing everything for the Bulls. And it's starting to catch up to him. This has been another bad shooting night. But he sniffed out Utah's pet play and stole himself an opportunity. An opportunity to stick a final dagger in Brian Russell's back. An opportunity to end the series and possibly his career right here, right now. Okay, we've arrived. Welcome to this moment in history. Jordan. Thank you for watching Rewinder. Some sports moments are so iconic, so familiar, that they've basically become cliche. And that's what we're trying to get around. We wanna recreate what it was like to be there anticipating the moment. If you have any thoughts for things we should do for future episodes, feel free to recommend them. And as always, please like and subscribe and mail me money to my house.